What's up, you fabulous forkers? Welcome to Where Does Food, <laughs> the food history podcast where we tell you a little bit about the history of food. I'm L. I'm your host, Tim, and I can't get a... I, every goddamn time we start this fucking podcast, I don't know what's going on. Uh, <laughs> how's it going, food delinquents? You fucking... You fucking forkers. <laughs> Thought that was good. Yeah, that's a good one. That's, that's a good, good one. I'm, I like that I'm one. I'm trying. I'm trying. So, yeah. Tim, today we're going to make Willy Wonka proud. And we're talking about chocolate. Yeah, chocolate. Tim, how do you feel about chocolate? Oh, dude. I love chocolate. I love chocolate, man. Me it's too. It's good. Do you have a preference on how you would like to eat your chocolate? Like, do you like chocolate bars? Do you like chocolate ice cream? Do you like chocolate cake? Mm. Like, none of the above? I don't know if I, I, yeah, I don't know if I have a preference. Um, if I see chocolate, I eat it. I think that's my preference. I respect that. That's a good preference. If it's chocolate, hey, it's chocolate. <laughs> if it's chocolate, I'm smashing. There's nothing else. Yeah. yeah if it's chocolate, yeah. If it's chocolate, I mean, we talked about cookies, right? And I didn't name. Uh, I did name chocolate chip cookies as a top cookie, but I didn't like chocolate cookies. Aren't like at the top of my list on that. So I guess like, you know, when it comes to like certain baked goods, like pies, I'm not big on chocolate pie, but sure. like cake yeah. for sure. Love chocolate cake. Big fan. Big fan. Ten out of ten. Uh, puddings. Love me some chocolate puddings. Chocolate pop pudding? Snack. Yeah, pop them in a snack pack. Gets Ooh. it going, you know what I mean? That's good, yeah. yeah. I'm all about that, yeah. Uh, mooses, love me some chocolate mousse. It's good. Oh my goodness gracious. Good. Mousse. And then of course, yeah, and then of course chocolate bars. Of course. Chocolate yeah. ganaches too. Yeah, ganaches are great. Yeah, ganaches are wonderful. Um, s'mores, love me some s'mores. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Quality S'more. time, it's got chocolate in it. it's <laughs> I don't know. It's more than so long. All right, we have to fix that soon. So those are have all. Have you seen? Hold on, I'm gonna cut you off. Have you seen the 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 big marshmallows that have chocolate in them now? And it's like from the Jet Puff Company or whatever. That, I don't know what the fuck that company's called, but no. they make like chocolate filled marshmallows what? now. Yeah. Is it good? I ha- oh, I haven't had them. I'm scared too because I'm worried that the chocolate's gonna be terrible and the marshmallow's gonna taste weird. I don't know if the marshmallow tastes weird. I'm just more concerned about the chocolate because when chocolate's bad, it's bad. <laughs> <laughs> You know what I mean? <laughs> when chocolate's bad, it's bad. Yeah, it's no, that's bad. True. If it's not good chocolate, it's bad chocolate. <laughs> it's like there's, you know how uh, with poke, I was like, hey man, bad sushi's good sushi. Nah, not with chocolate. Bad chocolate <laughs> is bad chocolate. That's just ass. That's true. Yeah, all chocolate is <laughs> not created equally. You can't. No, that's just ass. If it's bad, it's bad. Don't eat bad it. Bad is bad. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Good point. Noted. Yeah. One. Of, okay. I will say one of the cool things about chocolate is that it's a noted anti-inflammatory a neuroprotective, and it has cardioprotective effects. It can also improve the bioavailability of nitric oxide, which essentially improves the platelet function and the fluidity of blood. So not only okay, is it so, good, it's also just great for your body. Oh, that's cool. So how much does uh, heavy cream, milk, and sugar counteract those, <laughs> A lot. those qualities? A lot. Yeah, okay. It overpowers. Okay, just... It will 100% overpower. But yeah. to your point, if you have dark chocolate, that doesn't have as much percentage of those things. Right. You can't, you can't inherently gain the qualities of, of chocolate. Oh, what's the darkest chocolate you go for? Go. It's going to be at least 70% or above. Okay. So you so, got dark chocolate. Yeah, I'll do dark chocolate. Yeah. What about you, Tim? You dark chocolate. We don't do yeah. dark chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I agree. 70% or above, man. Yeah, no, I think 70 is good because it's, it's, just, it's just bitter enough, but it's just sweet enough also. Yeah. So just in general, the good old US of A is projected to make roughly $9 billion of the overall global confectionery market share. So on a scale of one to nine billion, Tim, how much would you rate chocolate? <laughs> you go one to nine. Damn. But. One to nine billion. Um eight billion two hundred and fifty million and one hundred and thirty eight thousand. I'm not gonna remember that one thirty eight, but we got No, <laughs> no, I'm not gonna remember I all eight I remember and a saying is Eight and a quarter. Eight and a quarter. <laughs> eight and a quarter. Eight and a quarter million. No, I'm, yeah, seriously, uh, big, big fan of chocolate. So I'm going to stick with my eight and a quarter. Uh, oh, yeah. Okay. For sure. I, big fan. You got a little wiggle room. You don't have much wiggle room, though. No. Um, and I just can't go hard on chocolate. It's just too, I really do. It's so good. It. It's I'm good. I'm yeah. fearing that you. it might actually go down a little bit. Yeah, some foreshadowing <laughs> to the rest of the the rest of the pod. Yeah, for, foreshadowing for information I might already know. <laughs> you probably have an idea, and we'll be able to uh, speak upon yeah. later as we get yeah, there. Yeah, I <laughs> literally messaged you what 
a week and a half ago before we got to this, <laughs> this week time. Was it last episode? week? Okay. It was last week. I don't know. I feel like it was last week. Uh, it was last week. It was last week. Yeah. And I was like, I was like, man, chocolate's going to be a sad one. I didn't do any research for this, by the way. I just kind of know. <laughs> like, I just kind of know how food works. So, well, just like poke, we're gonna have a we're gonna have a sad sad moment. Yeah, we're gonna have a sad moment. But then we're a- gonna have all thrills, baby. All so thrills. let's do it. Hey guys, welcome to the ad section. I'm here to tell you real quick about Anchor by Spotify. You may have heard us talk about Anchor at the end of our episodes. Is because Anchor is the platform we use to distribute our podcasts. It's totally free. It helps us distribute our podcasts to different platforms. That's how we're on Apple Podcasts. That's how we're on Google Podcasts, CastBox, you name it. They've helped us do that. You can record directly on the app, on the webpage. So you don't even need a super fancy setup. It's super straightforward, totally free. So download the Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started on your podcast or whatever you like to do. All right, guys, enjoy the rest of the episode chocolate 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 so just like just like top chocolate tim it's got rich flavor profiles well what would you say the history of chocolate is also very very rich oh thank okay you. thank you for that okay all yeah, right velvety like is it wait is it just rich or is it like velvety or is it kind of rough if it's like is it like artisan chocolate where it's a little it's like rougher it's like artisan chocolate you know? it's still good okay it's delicious. It's rich, but it's, but it's, you know, it's a little rough. There's, you know, it's, a little, some... it's a little gritty. <laughs> <laughs> the nitty gritty chocolate. No, okay, so heads yeah. up. I, I'm, I'm already doing this. I'm going to probably mispronounce words, and I'm going to apologize you for should, that right you now. Should, you should stop apologizing. No, I have to. And just I have commit. To. Just no, go in and I'm commit still committing. And... I'm still committing. I'm just apologizing no, we for the are commit. respected, respected, and revered. Food historians. Food historians. We know how yep. to pronounce these things. And and listen, I've been hearing inklings that we're not professionals. That we're, you know, we're like making it up as we go. Um, the fuck? What? We are food what? historians, okay? Culinary historians. We are professionals. We got our degree from Food University. F.U., baby. In, yeah, F.U., Food University in Key West, Florida. Yep, yeah, yep. Key West. That's where we got it from. Either way, continue. I just had to get that out. She's gonna, uh, she's gonna mispronounce some things. Just a few things, and then for terminology purposes, cacao is going to refer to the plant or its beans before yeah. processing. Chocolate will refer to anything that's made from the beans itself, okay. and then cocoa is just generally referring to chocolate in powdered form. Oh, okay, 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 okay. Cacao, cocoa. You got that? And cacao chocolate. is the plant before processing. Chocolates uh, when it's getting processed, and then the cocoa is powder. Got you. Got you. Got it. Before we get in, I'm going to test you. Oh. I'm going to test you. Do you? Kn- You're going to test me? Yeah. No, that's not how this Do works. Do you know the difference between uh, the Dutch cocoa powder and regular cocoa powder? Tim, I'm so glad you brought that up because we're going to talk about that the Dutch process. Okay, cool. And alkalining. Yeah. Nice. But again, you you can also comment on that when we get there. Yeah. Okay, yeah. I'm glad you, I, I had to test you, I had to see if you were going to have that in there or not. Before we get into chocolate, we do have to climb up the tree that is the c- the cacao tree, the plant, the in and of itself of how we get chocolate. It's not, we don't just get chocolate from the ground, but we do, kind of, and here's how. So, the cacao tree is an evergreen tree that can grow from about 20 to 40 feet, and it's after about four years is when it's going to reach its maturity. So, it's got, uh, it produces a cacao pod. And that pa- pod can grow to be about one pound. And then the pod in and of itself can have anywhere from 20 to 60 seeds. So, okay, the beans. What a wide range. 20, I know, to, I what, know. 20 to 60? Get some consistency, buddy. Fix and yourself. And then it could be 20 to 40 feet. Could you imagine a 40 <laughs> feet cacao tree and then it's yeah. 20 seeds? Yeah, I'd be pissed. What kind of Ben Simmons numbers are these? No, so I'd be I'd be upset about that. So, But I like that the like weight's said, consistent. Absolutely. <laughs> the weight's, the pod's always around a pound. <laughs> give or take. It's mostly, give or take one. <laughs> Tim, I'm glad you mentioned that because the pod is made mostly of the, the pulp that holds okay. the yeah. seeds in it. So pulp's kind of like... Yeah. It, the pulp they actually use it for juices, smoothies, jellies, and creams. Okay, I so it can that. be. Uh. 
yeah, wild. Apparently, the chemical makeup of like cacao beans in and of themselves, like sometimes they'll use them as bases for makeup because it's got caffeine and it's got some. Uh, I can't remember the other, but it's like really good for your for elasticity of your skin. Yeah. Okay. Wild. Yeah. Who would have thought? I I didn't. But yeah. So the pulp of your cacao pod can be used for that, and then you've got your cacao seeds, aka your chocolate. So you're probably wondering. Like most people, where am I going to find these trees at? Like, what's the situation? They're going to be best hanging out in a tropical uh, climate. Mostly Brazil, Ecuador, Mexico, Peru. These were the hot spots. These are the main places. And then, of course, colonization happened. And now, (laughs) more so African countries as well as Ecuador um, and Brazil and Peru. Um, Ghana and the Ivory Coast are going to be the main places that cacao farming occurs. So Africa and then South America. And then the cultivation, right? Yeah, the cultivation, the use, the culture collaboration of cacao. There were early, early findings in Mesoamerica. Mesoamerica, we can kind of make an assessment. It was essentially like central Mexico in that area. So it's really cool. So they found ceramic vessels with residue from preparation of cacao beverages. um, And they found them dating back to about 1900 to 900 BC. Whoa. So then we've got, yeah, fucking wild. We've got locations. So... A ceramic vessel at an Olmec archaeological site on the Gulf Coast of Veracruz, Mexico, dates cacao's preparation by pre-Olmec peoples as early as 1750 BC. Then we're going to go to the Pacific coast of Chiapas, Mexico. A Macoya archaeological site provided evidence of a cacao beverage dating earlier than 1900 BC. Damn. Wild. So like chocolate milk essentially has been around forever, but it wasn't chocolate milk because there wasn't milk in it. But people have been ingesting and drinking chocolate in and of itself for a very, very long time. Yeah. Um, there's an assumption that the initial domestication was probably related to the making of a fermented or technically alcoholic beverage. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know why I didn't think about that because chocolate's fermented. I'm sure people got boozy off that. Yeah. I'm sure they had some some boozy beverages to go with their fermented Absolutely. chocolate. It's good. If you wanted to have a good time, you you uh, called yeah. chocolate. You made a little chocolate beverage up. Yeah, sounds good. Which is you know what hits though? You know what schmack? <laughs> what Tim? What's uh, That chocolate almond milk from uh, <laughs> from the Blue Diamond. Uh, I wasn't expecting that at all. Okay, buddy, buddy, buddy. It hits. It hits. I mean, that shit is fire. Uh, also, with schmack though. What? Yoo-hoo's. I'm so glad you said that. you smacked dough. Yeah. Do you remember the double chocolate? Have I asked you that before? You remember the double chocolate yoo No, I don't remember the double chocolate yoo Yeah, man. Yeah, man. About, uh, I think it was around when I was like 10 or something like that. They had a double chocolate yoo She was. I bet that was, it was so good. good. It was so good. I bet that was so good. I don't know. I don't know why they stopped. I was like, mm, t- damn. They probably can't disres- find. I was disrespectful. like, disrespectful. They brought back like Gatorade and cans. I'm like maybe they can bring back the double chocolate for the Yoohoo's. They brought back Gatorades and cans. Wait a minute. Huh? Yeah, it was like uh for a second there. They were making Gatorades and cans. I don't know if because they were just it was a plastic bottle shortage shortage. But yeah, you can order some Gatorades oh. and cans. <laughs> we don't know if it's retro or if it's a shortage. <laughs> that's that's where we are now. We yeah. That's where we're at now. Yeah. <laughs> retro or shortage. Bless it. <laughs> this is America. Okay. So there are three main types of cacao. <laughs> We've got <laughs> we've got the oh, Forestero, man. the Criello, and the Trinitario. They sound Italian. I don't feel like. But anyways, the Forestero okay. varieties are most commonly used in commercial production. The Criello varieties are very susceptible to disease, so they're not widely grown. Um, but the Trinitario is a hybrid of the Forestero and the Criello varieties, and they produce this flavorful bean, and that's usually used in high quality dark chocolates. So those oh, are the yeah. types. Yeah, I didn't realize. And then so we've got the processed cacao bean that like the the one that comes from fluid paste or liquor um, from which cocoa powder and chocolate are made. Um, so the chocolate is sold directly to the consumer as solid bars. And then think of it as like baking chocolate. That's pretty much how we yeah. we get the chocolate. And so then you got the baker's chocolate and then you've got the cocoa powders, the chocolate liqueur, and then those blends. And those are usually used in a variety of food products. And they provide like that chocolate quote unquote flavoring to syrups, toppings, chocolate milk, yeah. cake mixes. And even like in some part of pharmaceuticals as well that have that quote unquote chocolate flavor. And then yeah. there, are t- there, are m- there are different methods. And this is what Tim was talking about earlier. So we've got the roasting method. This develops flavor, reduces acidity and astringency, lowers, mo- <laughs> lowers moisture content, 
deepens color and f- facilitates the shell removal. So after you roast it, comes the cracking and fanning process in which machines crack the shells and then separate them from the heavier nibs by the means of blowers. The cell walls of the nibs are in turn broken by grinding, releasing the fat or cocoa butter, forming a paste called chocolate liqueur or cocoa mass. If alkalized, Mm -hmm. Dutch chocolate liquors to produce, the cocoa beans may be winnowed raw and then the raw nibs will be alkalized and then roasted prior to grinding. So to kind of get more into the Dutch process. So this alkalizing process is a food grade alkali solution that may be applied in order to partially neutralize the natural cocoa acids. Mostly mostly acidic acid like that in vinegar, right? So just kind of think of that level. Or it may uh, may be used to produce an alkaline product with a pH as high as 8.0. So potassium carbonate is most commonly used as an alkalizer, although some alkalis such as sodium carbonate may also be used. Um, In addition to altering the pH of the cocoa powder, the process darkens color, mellows flavor, and alters taste characteristics. Then, this is this is the last but definitely not least, we've got the cocoa, pow- cocoa powders themselves. These are produced by pulverizing cocoa cakes made by subjecting the chocolate liquor of about 53 to 56% cocoa butter content to hydraulic pressing to remove a predetermined amount of cocoa butter. So in the United States, these commercial grades, you're looking at about 11 17 or 22 percent cocoa butter those are going to be varying de- varying degrees and then these methods then wow. produce specific types of chocolates it's a whole thing wow it's a whole thing so that's, that was that's so much it's so much i didn't realize i didn't realize it was it was a whole i mean i understand it was a process but not leveled out like that and so whenever you create the baking chocolate that's usually made from the finely ground nibs oh okay and then right. um the broken pieces of the roasted shelled cocoa beans too. Okay. And then this one's this one's bitter because there's no sugar in it. Um, and mm-hmm. it can either be natural or alkaline. So okay. you can treat it that way, okay. or it's just gonna roll off the the belt as is. Then you've got the sweet yeah. chocolate, which is like not the dark chocolate, but it's darker chocolate. Um, yeah. This one you add the chocolate again, the the treated mm-hmm. chocolate liquor, um, sugar, cocoa butter. And then vanilla beans, salt, spices, essential oils. Right. Um, it's just like a, it's just like an, it's a mix essentially. You got to, it, yeah. To then create a bar or some shit like that. You got it. Whatever. They're gonna add like some sort of yeah. emulsifier in this, and then usually the sweet chocolate contains about fifteen percent chocolate liquor content, but most sweet mm-hmm. chocolate will contain about twenty five to thirty five, because we'll. To your point earlier, we'll just blast that shit up a little bit more. Yeah. And then there's milk chocolate. And then you said that's when you substitute a milk solid for a portion of the chocolate Mm -hmm. liquor. And then that's, again, that kind of goes back. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, at the the processing plants for these things, it must be one impressive uh, ordeal. No, absolutely. And the thing is, like, even... So because you know they like have they just have all the different functions like you mm-hmm. know what I mean it's like oh this batch is going here this batch is going exactly. here this batch is going there and then it just like all just processes it and exactly they have their workers just kind of making sure shit's going well <laughs> and it's it's interesting too because they'll also use the shells so it's not only just like mm-hmm. the the seeds and the nib, like the nibs themselves but they'll use the shells for fertilizer mulch and they can also be used for fuel too yeah so it's I mean almost using the entirety of of the crop itself um, which Seems doesn't like a good yield. Yeah, and that doesn't happen a lot. But the thing with the thing with cacao is that you can only you're limited to the the size of farming that you can do with them. Most of the time you're not going to see like these these vast like lands of of crop. That's yeah. just not with that's just it's fucking trees. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Like it, like they can only yeah. grow so much, right? And I mean it takes literally 4 years mm-hmm. for it to to come back and, and naturally produce so that's yeah. yeah no i that again something that we i especially didn't even think about when it comes to chocolate and then to your point again like we talked about the cultivation like this is a pretty heavily involved manual labor process um again when we, yeah. we talk about where it's being done these are places that haven't exactly fully industrialized the farming the agricultural process that they go through um a yeah. lot of it still heavily relies on people manpower (laughs) on manpower and unfortunately in these countries it's more so ends up lying on women and children um yeah in most cases again i can't confirm for sure but in most cases it's not necessarily a a situation of forced child labor or or forced women labor but also in that same breath these are opportunities quote unquote that have been presented guys it's guys 
the employer employee relationship yeah. is not a balanced relationship whenever the employer uh, is the only employer. Yeah. Uh, it's forced. Uh, I don't care what Amos says. It's forced and it's shitty. The power balance Do is not there. Yeah. Yeah. Do better. Do better. Be better. Um, that's the that's the tag line to where does food now <laughs> it's just like do better be better no better be better yeah i you have more to say i'll let you finish your no you're good i'm like you I can you can definitely like send send it home on no. this one so no i'm yeah i'm not gonna get on my high horse yet <laughs> so a, a, a small a horse a miniature that I'm gonna no. get on um a recent report from the University of Chicago indicated that about 1.6 million children engaged in child labor on cacao farms in the Ivory Coast and Ghana. Again, so that's just in Africa. Let's not mm. count the numbers coming out of Mm-mm. South America, which was horse, very muddled. It horse was hard had a growth spurt. Yeah. Um some things I want to mention that drive child labor are limited access to schools, education. Um, cultural practices and then lack of awareness and gender inequality those are the biggest things that are gonna um, play into child labor regardless yeah. of where you are and then on the flip yeah. side of that women are heavily involved in all stages of cacao tree production heavily heavily involved but to your point they don't have any autonomy in that it's estimated that women provide almost 50 percent of the labor force for cacao trees Again, but no autonomy in that. Yeah. Okay. Right. And so we're talking, and and what we're really talking about here, right, is we're talking about a, like our the global network that is like employment. I mean, it's just in these companies are just global companies, and so we're talking about these countries that you know they have their they have their uh, they're developing and they have different um, cultures than uh, you know than we do than any than other countries that are you know closer to them and as far as like development wise, like, you know, every country's got their own culture and like what we do and how we do things differently. However, it's the ceiling for like how we should treat people mm-hmm. when it comes to employment really for the love of fucking Christ has, has to be better. It has to be better. It, it just has to be better. I don't, I really don't have much to say on it because it's just, it. it's, it's just insane to me. I mean, it like, why like there's like this food that we just see on the shelves and we just shop and we just buy it and you know it's okay that we like we don't necessarily think about that all the time mm-hmm. but it's it's definitely like again and I'm not trying to sound conspiratorial or like it's like a fucking Mad Max villain at the top of like these chocolate companies although you know Nestle <laughs> uh, but like <laughs> you know but like I mean. I think I I think that maybe a little bit of that short sightedness that we have as consumers absolutely lends a hand for them to be a little fucking shysty. You know what I mean? One hundred percent. They're allowed to be shysty. They're allowed to like. I mean, and let's face it, they're trying to sell a product. You know, they're selling us fucking five dollar candy bars, and they're making it for fifty cents. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and 20 cents of that's going to labor like it's just you know what i mean it's just, those are figurative numbers those aren't real um but yeah, like fine. you know what i mean it's just i don't know it's just one of those things where it's just like it, and this child labor it's not just chocolate you know what i mean like nike has an issue with it as well we got a lot of like fast fashion things like I was that, gonna say, that your your favorite employment. fast fast fashion brand probably has a problem with those yeah that does like the whole child labor thing but i don't know it that's my that's my whole thing let's just you know i think we should hold these companies to better standards Mm -hmm. absolutely the corporate responsibility there yeah yeah as a society not like personally yeah you know what i mean absolutely you don't don't i don't believe in the bootstrap terminology so don't do that but like (laughs) as a society we should (laughs) collectively as a community we should uh ask them to be better and they should do better they know better they should do better they can afford to also Uh, oh and they know they know they know. And that's the kicker. <laughs> yeah, they know, and they they could probably afford they to. Fuck it. And you know what? And if they don't know, it's negligence. Yeah, <laughs> not true. <laughs> they they listen. That's ain't no way out of it. <laughs> you either negligent or you know. <laughs> like, so yeah, I mean, continue. they have they have some <laughs> some strategies in place to kind of help curve all of these things. You know, microfinance, improved access to land ownership and membership and farmer groups or co-ops. Um, yeah, these, buddy. All these things can all be, have super positive impacts, but again, it's something that actively you're struggling with. On top of those things, yeah. there's also deforestation, right? So 
historically deforestation has been linked to poverty and inef- insufficient law enforcement, immigration, logging and mining activities. And I mean, just so much more, all these things um, heavily, heavily contribute to climate change. And that's directly going to yeah. threaten not only cacao farmers livelihoods, but farmers across the world for all time. I mean, yeah. we're seeing that now. So, Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah, we are. And so it's like, yeah, we have governments, um, you know, nonprofit organizations, um, you know, they've man, attempted, it's, but it's, it's truly just the sheer disrespect for like, for food. It blows my mind mm-hmm. every time, every time I, I just, I, I've said it before previously and I can just kind of expand upon it, but like, I just don't think food works on a straightforward business model. You know what I mean? I just don't it can't. think it works that way. I just don't like you know, I just think like profits are going to have to get it. You know what I mean? Like they, like they just can't like we can't just like shoot for the fucking sky when it comes to like profits when it comes to food, man. Like we have to take care of the people that are getting the food for us. We have to take care of the processes around food and we have to take care of the land that provides the food. We have to take care of it. It's not an option. And if you keep going, we're going to lose things like chocolate and we're going to lose things like vanilla. Oh we're going to lose these these things that we're just used to that we don't think twice about. Exactly. And, you know, it's not, I don't mean to be dire. I'm being dire. I don't mean to be dire. I just, you know. Sign of the times. It's, it's not an option. It's not an option. Like, it, we have to be better about the way we treat food. We just have to be. Uh, and again, I mean collectively as, as a society. Not personally. Do your best personally. We're all trying. But, like, as a society, we should do better. And we should support co-ops. <laughs> yes. Oh my gosh. Yes. Be- be- Community yes. gardens. We support yes. those because it's yeah because it's fucking ownership. Like holy fuck, support that shit. Please, for the love of God, support it. <laughs> Continue. <laughs> okay. So I mean, it's kind of perfect though. I mean, now that we have an idea of chocolate and how chocolate, chocolate becomes quote unquote chocolate, let's talk about who and how and why we got here. Let's, All right. Let's get into it. So. If you say Columbus, I'm going to fight the fuck out oh of you. Oh boy, do I have a surprise for you. So, <laughs> etymologists trace the origin of the word chocolate to the Aztec word exocodal. Exo- I said, I practiced okay. this so many times, and of course I fucked it, it up. It is now. okay if you can't pronounce which, an Aztec word. <laughs> <laughs> which re- They're going to come on me. Um, which referred to a bitter drink brewed from the cacao beans, the Latin name for the Hell cacao yeah. tree. The Obrama cacao means food of the gods. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. It, we love chocolate. Okay. So, Tim. Yeah, it's good, man. It's the food of the gods. It's food of the gods. <laughs> there, I'm going to start saying that now, people. You want chocolate again? It's the food of the gods. Um, so, there's four the main gods. types of chocolate that we identify today. So, we've got like the okay. spondent chocolate. This is the most expensive chocolate with the intense and persistent aroma of cacao melts in your mouth, leaving a pleasant, bitter aftertaste. Should be smooth to the touch, silky, and never grainy. The percentage of cacao cacao, cacao is one of the main characteristics determining its quality. The best ones contain at least 70% cacao in them. Wow. So we've got good taste. Yeah. I mean, I knew this already. Okay, I did. So it's fine. Then we've got... (laughs) Then we've got Gianduja. It's brown in color. This is born from the union of hazelnuts, cacao, and sugar. Sometimes milk, almonds, and walnuts are added. Um, this was first made in Turin in the mid 19th century. You're talking about Nutella. We're talking, <laughs> talking about that there Nutella. Uh, you're talking about Nutella. You said ca- you said cacao and hazelnuts. That's cacao. Nutella. <laughs> milk, hazelnuts. That's that's it. But here, <laughs> here's the milky, the milky chocolate. This contains not less than 20 to 25% cacao. In addition to the cacao butter, it's got sugar. That's a bit, that, that's abysmal. <laughs> <laughs> that's so little chocolate. So little chocolate. We have the, we, we have the milk chocolate. It's 1% cacao, <laughs> all cacao butter, and the rest is milk. It li- no, yeah, Tim, because it's literally sugar, milk powder, and lictosin. So yeah, yeah, a good milk chocolate is crisp. But it dissolves quickly yeah. in the mouth to a slightly mushy paste. And then finally, yeah. the taste should be sweet with a slight bitter note from the cacao because there's literally none in there. So Yeah, just a slight bitter note. Just it's like it's a it's more of a whisper. It's a whisper. It's a it's a whisper of a bitter note. 
through because of the cacao. Yes, so. it's a good. It's good for those that enjoy just the good best old. milk chocolate bars get waved over a bed of cacao beans, but never touch. But never touch the cacao. You just want the aroma, the illusion of cacao that there's yeah. chocolate in here. It's the Lacroix of chocolate. But you bars. want you <laughs> just. That's a comp. Just, That's a comp right there. Oh my goodness. Yeah. It's just a hint. A just hint. a fucking so it's a suggestion of chocolate. And then it's it just is, milk and sugar. It's milk and sugar with the suggestion of chocolate. <laughs> That's what it is. It's delicious though. Okay, so then you've got white chocolate. Yeah. Which is cacao butter and sugar guys, and milk. Ex- um, yes, thank you. And <laughs> yeah, that's literally it. So you guys probably yeah. like white chocolate is more so used for like creative culinary. White chocolate can suck my ass. I hate that shit. It's so <laughs> gross. Tim, why do you hate white chocolate so much? I say I hate it, but I'm not gonna lie. I can munch on some white chocolate because like, I just like chocolate. But like out of all the chocolates, <laughs> like a white chocolate no. mousse. Oh my gosh! Fuck off! I don't care. It's not chocolate. It's just got cacao butter in it. I don't consider it chocolate. It's, yeah, no. It's literally that is the main difference. Like, yes, it does. It is chocolate, yeah. but it has. It's just the the butter, which it's like you want to talk about yeah. remnants and wisps of chocolate. Like, yeah. there, that's white chocolate. It's just the. It's just the butter. Um. Yeah, white chocolate. I can't necessarily eat white chocolate on its own. It yeah. tastes weird to me. Well, so so we use Giardelli at work. Giardelli white chocolate. Ooh. Um, and that shit. That that you know what? Their white chocolate is really. Y'all are good. fancy. Okay. It's it's yeah. It's very solid. Very solid white chocolate. Okay. Props to Giardelli. I say yeah. The one only time I'll have white chocolate is gonna be um like the peppermint barks. Yeah. Yeah. It, I mean, and even then it's layered. So. Yeah, you know, but like everything, it's got to be a good quality, you know? Like, it it might not be, like, actual chocolate, but there are some bad white chocolates out well, there. Well, it's like, he's, yeah, <laughs> no. it's like, Some waxy, like, waxy white chocolates, I swear to God. Man, it's like you said, like, weirdly enough, like, bad sushi can still be good sushi, but bad chocolate is just bad chocolate. It's just bad chocolate. There's no chocolate. coming back from that, yeah. Yeah, yeah. What an interesting, uh, that's, if, I, if I take anything yeah. away from this season, it might be that. Okay, so... <laughs> So, as mentioned before, archaeologists have discovered the earliest traces of cacao and potter used by the ancient Mayo Chimpi culture 5,300 years ago in the upper Amazon region of Ecuador. Like, chocolate is fucking old, you guys. Um, chocolate played an important political, economic, and spiritual role in ancient Mesoamerican. Kind of, kind of mentioned it earlier. So, the mm. ground roasted cacao beans, they would usually um, make that into a paste, and then that paste would be mixed with water, vanilla, chili peppers, and other spicy, like other spices, really. Um, and then they would brew it, and it'd create this chocolate frothy drink. Nice. They were out there, again, not really making chocolate milk, but enjoying and ingesting were, chocolate. Yes. Yeah. Sort of seems like they were treating it like coffee, but you know. Yeah. And it makes sense because. Chocolate yeah. has caffeine in it, so yeah, you know, a little roasty toast. They're a little roasty toasty. Throw, you know, throw some hot water over it. There you go. It, Tim, yes, absolutely. Because uh, we're now getting to the legend has a portion of the evening. <laughs> okay, so we've got legend has it with L. Boom, boom, boom. That's our new. That's our new segment. It's legends of the hidden temple. But Legends of the Hidden Edible. Oh shit! We're a weed podcast. <laughs> Damn it, Tim! No, it's about edible foods. <laughs> but we could maybe do an episode does, on that. Where does weed? <laughs> So we've got the Mayans, the Toltecs, and the Aztecs. They all essentially get credit for the creation of chocolate, pretty much just because they were all kind of hanging out around the same time. But yeah, they were all around the chocolate. But let's see what he, I'm. I'm going to be curious to know if you t- have a different take on this. So ancient Mesoamericans they believe chocolate was an energy booster and an aphrodisiac with mythical and medicinal qualities. The Mayans, who considered cacao a gift from the gods, used chocolate for sacred ceremonies and funeral offerings. Wealthy Mayans drank foaming chocolate drinks, while commoners consumed chocolate in a cold, porridge-like dish. The Maya believed that cacao, or cacao, was discovered by the gods in a mountain that also contained other delectable foods for them to be eaten. According to Maya mythology, the plumed serpent gave cacao to the Maya after humans were created from maize by divine grandmother goddess Zumacane. It was used as an official ceremonies and religious rituals at feasts and funerals, again, and festivals as well. Um, they were also used as tribute and they were also used for medicinal purposes. So both cacao itself okay, okay. and the vessel, right? 
Those instruments were used for the preparation and serving of cacao, and they were also used as important gifts for tribute. So the beans were also used in betrothal, like in marriage ceremonies, and then more so again for the upper middle, like the upper middle, the upper class of the Mayans. So, <laughs> the upper, yeah, how about shake out? So by 1400, here come the Aztecs. They're like, listen, what's up? At this point, they've taken over a sizable part of Mesoamerica. The kicker is, is that they can't cultivate cacao themselves um, because the climate just isn't there for them. So they've got to import it. Of all the areas that were conquered by the Aztecs that grew cacao beans, they were ordered to pay those as a tax or a tribute to the Aztecs. So if you were out there and you were near the Aztecs and you were able to to grow cacao, they were like, hey, you're going to pay that to us. It's just it's just a tribute to the gods. Thank you. Appreciate it. Love you. Um, the cacao bean also became a form of currency there as well. And then the Aztecs... Damn. Yeah, right. The Aztecs also have a very similar origin story to the Mayans. So the Aztec god Quetzalcoatl discovered cacahuatl, okay. or also known as bitter water, and a mountain filled with other plant foods. This is fun. The Madrid Codex, it's one of the few surviving books that is from the Aztecs that was essentially defined as like the pre-Columbus era. There's not shit mm-hmm. left from them. But, like, this is one of the few things. In this book, it depicts priests lancing their earlobes and covering the cacao with blood as a suitable sacrifice to the gods. And then, according to the Journal of Nutrition, uh, it's an article, um, and I quote, The cacao beverage was used as a ritual only by men as it was believed to be intoxicating and food unsuitable for women and children. Wow. So that's the Mayan and the Aztecs. Yeah. Did I hear correctly that the mayans believe that they were formed out of maize Mm -hmm. they believe they're corn they believe they believed that they were corn people they were corn people because maize was like the end all be all crop because you could do so much with it right that's in that's we were talking about you know you're talking about cacao but that's insight to how they felt about corn as well Mm -hmm. (laughs) yeah they had some good feelings on that corn and Um, chocolate wow that's crazy man that's awesome. I like both of those stories. That's fun. I think they work together. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I think it feels like the mines maybe had a leg up though. I give it. I give you the. No. Yeah. I give it because they yeah. were actually able to, to produce it themselves. Yeah. Yeah. Get their it hands on it. Feels like maybe they had a better. Under- if they didn't have a leg up, they had a better understanding mm-hmm. of how cacao worked. Go Mayans. Go Mayans. For once you beat the Romans. <laughs> On this Romans side of the world, involved. man. Again, yeah, it kind Romans of involved. it blew my mind how old like the idea of chocolate is, though. Because again, it's not like yeah. we're just talking about the cultivation of just the beans, and they were like, "Here, eat the bean." I mean, they were already yeah. breaking it down, having the yield of the bean, which is the chocolate in and of itself, and then putting that in a drinkable yeah. beverage or man, ferment. Like I fucking dude. Sometimes I wish I like. Sometimes I wish I had the conviction. That like ancient religious societies had, <laughs> you know what I mean? Holy shit, buddy! You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, can you imagine eating, <laughs> eating cacao, eating eating a processed cacao, and just going like, "Fuck, this is God's." Yeah, this is this for is, sure. This is really God's plan. Dan, I found God's shit. <laughs> this is God's shit, by the way. Hey, they, he did this. <laughs> they felt everyone gather good. around, gather around. This is God's shit. God did this. And if you eat it, it tastes real good. And then they had a whole thing about it and ceremonies about it. And I don't think I've ever consumed anything and have had that much feeling about no. it. No. Ever. I'm, like, that's, what I, that's what I mean, is I just wish I had that level Tim is gonna get of crazier. conviction about it. <laughs> the conviction is going to get crazier about it. Because, yeah, again, at this point, they were, I mean, also using the beans as currency. So it's like, not only are you guys eating it. And it's yeah. being, here's the unique thing about chocolate that we'll see a comparison now when we come to Europe. Yeah. But obviously, like, you had the upper class of mines yeah. enjoying it one way. And then you had what would be considered quote unquote the lower class of the mines also still ingesting it also still being able to enjoy the peasants chocolate just say the peasants the pe- peasants <laughs> the, okay. the peons um which is unique because most of the times whenever yeah. we've seen food enter in any society it's always through the wealthy and then it trickles down it's never a we have this yeah or yeah or vice versa right yeah. where it's like yeah. it's so readily available to fucking peasants that that it then because it works hard enough to become like a commodity that like rich people are like ooh, let me in person mm-hmm. a poor person for a week i'm gonna eat this gonna and eat be this. ooh, look charles i'm poor <laughs> you know what i mean <laughs> look charles i'm poor yeah you know how you know how rich people like to like play poor for a week uh slum it yeah, up they like to play poor 
they like to be facsimiles of poor people you know what i mean oh yeah i that's my day-to-day life oh wait yeah so on one of their many visits to central and south america the spaniards got a hold of chocolate and they spread it to europe the only way they knew how to um colonizing and pillaging through mesoamerican culture and people Uh, so legend has it that chocolate arrived in europe during the 1500s likely brought over by spanish friars and conquistadors that had traveled to the americas chocolate was the delectable symbol of luxury wealth and power an expensive import slipped (laughs) slipped um shipped by royal lip ships and affordable only to spanish elites again this is this wait on the the columbus thing yeah it took a while for the rest of europe to catch on the chocolate and it remained a spanish cuisine staple for a super long time before europe decided to give it a try um i want to note here this is where this story kind of comes into play there's a claim that the spanish explorer hernando cortez guys probably heard of him Apparently, he was the one that introduced Spanish to the chocolate after the Aztec king, King Montezuma, initially introduced it before they did our boys dirty and completely pillaged and raped those those people, their resources, all of that. Apparently, they were drinking the chocolate at a banquet that King Montezuma put on for Cortez. From there, the legend goes that the beverage made from cacao was introduced to the Spanish court in, in 1544 by Ke- Kechimaya. Um, it was a noble that brought, um, that brought the chocolate over from by Dominican friars. And then those Dominican friars, there's like, hey, Prince Philip, a.k.a. Philip II, a.k.a. Philip the Prudent. He was married to Elizabeth I, <laughs> of course. So, like all things, chocolate popularly eventually spread to other European courts where aristocrats consumed it as a magic elixir with health benefits. This is where it gets a little a little more messy. European powers... This is where it gets messy? <laughs> this is where it gets Holy more messy. Holy fucking yeah. shit. So you're, we just talked about raping and pillaging people. Yeah, because we're, about to, <laughs> we're think... about to do that part again just somewhere else in the world. So European okay. powers established colonial plantations in equatorial regions around the world to oh, grow cacao and sugar. Fuck. Mm-hmm. When fuck. diseases brought <laughs> by <laughs> Europeans depleted the native Mesoamerican labor pool... African slaves were imported to the Americas to work on the plantain plantations and maintain chocolate production. The French, shout out, uh, the damn. French to establish cacao plantations in the Caribbean, while Spain subsequently developed their cacao plantations in Venezuela and Philippine colonies. Yeah. History's fucking brutal, dude. Yeah. Yeah. Ah, damn. We, they, I say we. I was not a part of that. They literally destroyed mesoamerica and whoever was left there and they said okay great and then they brought slaves over from africa to maintain the production that's wild man fucking hey that sucks yeah i really don't have i really don't have anything to say on that because that you know it's shitty it happened long it happened uh you know long time ago and it's a shitty part of the past and we should not celebrate any of those fucks no that's what I'll that's what I'll say. Don't celebrate those bitches. Yeah, no, it's dark. Um so yeah. we're in Europe now. Um in 1657, a Frenchman opened a chocolate shop in London. And so soon hereafter, chocolate houses started popping up. Yeah. London. Um chocolate houses started <laughs> popping up all over Europe. They were all the rage. Um so this is this is an interesting little nick. Of course, not only did they serve chocolate in these houses to these wealthy, wealthy people, they also had political meetings. And of course, oh. what goes hand in hand with political meetings? High stakes gambling. So these chocolate yeah, houses yeah, that, were that makes sense. A lot of fuck shit was going on, and then they were sipping on that yeah. that drinky drink. Now, yeah, they're like they were just brothels. <laughs> <laughs> Probably brothels with chocolate sauce everywhere. Chocolate's making its way to America now. Yeah, chocolate is starting to Did manufacture. Like- who brought it like jefferson <laughs> <laughs> no thankfully actually no ironically it was it was immigrants so in 1765 okay. in dorchester massachusetts well it's uh, first of all it's always immigrants well you know <laughs> you know what i mean tim <laughs> but we give credit we, to everyone else yeah no there's a fun little kicker about that but we'll get to that here in a second so ben franklin it was ben franklin it wasn't Just, ben franklin no. <laughs> no, no, no it actually wasn't in in america it was Jamaica. Okay. Okay. So American colonies in 1765 in Dorchester, Massachusetts, using beans brought by the New England sea captains from their voyages to the West Indies, James Baker financed the first mill, which was operated by the Irish immigrant, John Hannon. 
and water powers was used to grind the beans. Oh, okay. Sweet. So this is, yeah, this is essentially how it started. Um, so chocolate really just came into our lives because the Mesoamericans thought it was divine and brought about incredible health and wellness benefits and positive fortunes. And that's essentially why we started eating chocolate or ingesting. I should say eating chocolate, ingesting chocolate because it was yeah. drank first. And this is kind of where it gets a quick brief history of the globalization of chocolate. Yeah. Because, you know, it's not super complicated. No. <laughs> Once we start globalizing it, it, it's always pretty quick. It's it's so fast. So it's like 1660, you've got Belgium, Germany, Switzerland, Austria, Italy, all them homies. They're doing the chocolate houses. They're perfecting chocolate. Mm-hmm. They're lo- enjoying it. They're loving it. Again, this is only for like wealthy people. Then, weirdly enough, we see a religious exemption is the reason why chocolate starts spreading like wildfire. So... In 1662, Cardinal Brancaccio pronounced that drinking hot chocolate did not break the fasting period, spurring the spread of the drink in monastery and European courts. Wow. Didn't expect that. So the mass production of selling chocolate happens because of the steam engine. Like, I, who would have thought? Um, the steam engine, it makes, duh, it makes chocolate cheaper to produce and it makes it easier to produce and distribute. Duh, of course. Going back to how important like cacao beans were during the american revolutionary war chocolate was so valued that it was included in soldiers rations and used in lieu of wages my boys were out here just fighting for right for the revolution getting paid in fucking chocolate chocolate and their muskets that's all these guys had (laughs) wow dude (laughs) holy fucking shit wow wow didn't learn i didn't learn that in school no (laughs) holy fuck like what the hell i would have never guessed that at all holy fuck Fuck! You mean fucking, that fucking George Washington? George Washington fucking was slave teeth. Slave teeth himself was just doling out chocolate. My guy was out. <laughs> that's what they didn't tell you. My guy was out here on the Delaware, just like, hey, catch a cocoa. Hey, yeah. you get a cocoa. Throw, throwing chocolate, chocolate coins at people. <laughs> that's actually where chocolate coins came from. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> actually, Tim, that probably <laughs> is War. like that. <laughs> that would make sense. The use as a currency. Holy fucking shit. So now dude, we isn't that wild? Now we get to the like kind of like the power players of chocolate. Like the who's who of yeah. what made chocolate that we know of today. So eighteen twenty eight, Dutch cacao. Haha. A Dutch chemist, CJ Van Houten, found a way to make powder chocolate by removing about half the natural fat, that cacao butter that Tim was talking about earlier, from chocolate liquor pulverizing what remained and then treating the mixture with alkaline salts to cut the bitter taste. So then, 1847, our boy Joseph Fry creates the first modern chocolate bar using that Dutch cocoa process that we've got going on. Mm. In 1868, the British company, I don't know, you've probably heard of them, Cadbury? Yeah, those guys. Yeah, yeah. They start to sell sweet little chocolates. And then 1876, milk chocolate made by Swiss Peter Daniel with condensed milk and powder created by the one and only Henry Nestle, quote unquote. Man. In 1900, some Swiss chocolate factories, um, Lint and and Sprungli and Tobler Stuttgart, you've probably heard of these factories, just not as as that. Um, They helped uh, get chocolate everybody. 1905, Cadbury sells the dairy milk chocolate that people know and love. 1907, Hershey's invents Hershey Kisses. Um, Which, by the way... Cadbury tastes way different in Europe yes. than it does in the States. Um, so if you don't like Cadbury, if you don't like Cadbury here, just know that you're getting like a lesser quality Cadbury. Like literally it's lesser quality. There is That's okay though. A huge difference between like the sugar that is used abroad versus what gets put in our beverages and food here. It's ten times yeah. better abroad. One of the biggest taste bud shocks I've ever had was um visiting family in India. And eating like mm. a, a Cadbury bar, very different yeah. than what you get here versus what you get there. Same things yeah. like with like Cokes and Fanta. Yeah. Like, hey, first of all, but let's, I'm going to be honest with you real, real quick, even though I don't have a lot of experience eating like foreign renditions of like what we have here in the States. Listen, we may not do, I, uh, chocolate's like an exception, all right? When it's bad chocolate, it's bad chocolate. <laughs> However, we do, uh, make some of the like most msg salty goodness when it comes to chips and things like that and all the alternative versions i guarantee you aren't hitting 
like they, they don't. hit here. No, they don't. They don't hit because you know they're mean? missing I bet the MSG. Doritos, ain't sh- uh, Doritos aren't schmacking if it's made with yellow cheese, all right? It got to be orange. The Lay's don't okay? hit, yeah. You're absolutely right <laughs> yeah. about that. Yeah, so, you know, props to us for not caring about our food. <laughs> <laughs> we're number one not in food safety we're number one so yeah then 1910 belgian inventor jean newhouse the second and created these chocolate dairy confections with flavored filling called pralines and then 1923 frank mars creates the milky way nice so yeah the jamaicans let's talk about them so the jamaicans are credited for brewing a hot beverage made of freshly harvested cacao boiled with milk and cinnamon as far back as 1494. They made hot cocoa? Sounds like hot cocoa to me, right? So Jamaicans made hot cocoa, but they added cinnamon. That's that adult move right there. Guys, if you're adding cinnamon to your chocolate like things, oh, you're messing up, man. Cinnamon, it plays. It plays just the right just the It's right not note. overbearing. It brings like a little bit of warmth to your chocolate. That's what I'm saying. 10 out of 10. Jamaicans create hot chocolate. Yes, because here's here's the kicker with that. There's a guy named Hans Alone, and he was an Irishman who spent some time in Jamaica, and he gets, quote unquote, credited for the creation of like hot chocolate because he brought the the milk, or like he brought like the mix of cacao, of the cacao powder, and, the mi- and then he mixed milk into it, and he used it as a remedy. And so everyone was like, Shut oh, up. like you created hot chocolate. And it's like, no, no, he took the recipe that the Jamaicans already had and brought it over. I swear to God. So Jamaicans invented hot chocolate. And Jamaicans invented, which I think is really fantastic because it's like I've Caribbean, like you feel like it's a hot country and it's like, oh no, they've been like smashing hot chocolate for as long as I can remember, 1494. Yeah, man. So that was really cool. Yeah, I thought that was was a nice little... little, They knew knew it was hitting right off the bat. Right off the bat. There a little cinnamon in there. Like you said, total adult move. So let's fast forward to today and what the state of of the cacao and and chocolate is. So the cacao plant, kind of mentioned earlier, it's grown in several countries, mostly Ivory Coast, Ghana, Indonesia, Nigeria, Brazil, Cameroon, Ecuador, the Dominican Republic, and Papua New Guinea. Other countries cultivating it are Madagascar, Malaysia, Mexico, some Caribbean islands such as Grenada and Cuba, and then some Pacific islands like Samoa. About three quarters of the world's cocoa beans are produced in Africa. I'm gonna say that again. About three quarters of the world's cocoa beans are produced in Africa. It's like cacao beans. Wow. Um, African production is about three times the output in the homeland of chocolate, America, quote unquote. Um, the main cacao bean producing country is gonna be the Ivory Coast, followed by Ghana, and then Ecuador. Wow. The Ivory Coast is also the leading cocoa bean processor just ahead of the netherlands did kind of want to add this asterisk to that so belgium is the country that exports the most amount of chocolate and chocolate containing products but it's africa more specifically the ivory coast that leads in the process and production of the cacao plant in and of itself tim it's roughly five tons that they're responsible for and then overall like when you talk about like projected so by the end of 2022 the worldwide chocolate confectionery market share will come into an estimated $207 billion. And that's just in 22. And it's like looking at graphs. I mean, that's only going to go up. My God. Yeah. To put it in perspective, the United States has about $9 billion of market share of that chocolate market share. Again, the entire thing is $207 yeah, billion. Like that's yeah, United States makes up a lot nothing. of it, but it's nothing. Nothing, Nothing in comparison to the rest minis, of the world. Minuscule, yeah. So we have no, we have no leverage. <laughs> no, which <laughs> no leverage. No surprise. But yeah, Tim, that's chocolate. Yeah. That is chocolate. That's chocolate, that's man. Chocolate. That's chocolate. That was a long in, uh, ride. Cacao shell, baby. That was a long that's, ride. Yeah, that is a long ride. Um, yeah, eight and a quarter. Wow. What are you feeling? Uh, eight. Eight. We lost the quarter. It. <laughs> Yeah, it, yeah, we've figured. lost a quarter. I figured. <laughs> for, for very obvious goddamn reasons. <laughs> <laughs> now I can't eat chocolate anymore, guys. <laughs> no, I can't. I will uh, still. And I had some today, so. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, dude, that's wild. What a ride. What a ride. Um, I'm dropping it to eight. Uh, not any fault to you, though. It is what uh, it is. Yeah, f- mainly fault to the like, raping and pillaging part. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Mm-hmm. the child labor part stuck with me as well yeah so that's chocolate we should i don't know do better 
Um, no better do better. Yeah. Welcome to Where Does Food. That's the end of the podcast. So I guess to say goodbye to Where Does Food. That's the end of the podcast. <laughs> um, if you liked what you heard, uh, great. That's awesome. You should tell us about that. Tell us how much you like it by leaving a simple review and a rating. It's super easy, and it's a quick and easy way to support us. It's fantastic. Super nice. Do you like that intro music? Do you like the outro music playing Pretty right sick, now? Pretty sick, right? you like our little stingers? Cool, right? Sick. Well, they're made by a friend of mine. Good friend of the podcast. Awesome, Mark. You can check out his music on Spotify under the name Meridian Sky. I, You know what? I should ask him if he has other profiles. I'll do that. Um, but I do know he's on Spotify, so if you want to go listen to him, uh, he does, you know, he makes this nice, like, instrumental rock music. It's super cool. It's jam. You know, it's, you know, it's jam bandy type stuff. It's great. Support, support people. Just go support people. Support him. He does a great job, and he did our music and stuff literally just because he likes the podcast. So, <laughs> good guy. That's awesome. Um, you can, uh, you can check us out on Twitter, mainly. We do have websites, wheredosfood.com. Oh, yeah. But you can you can check us out on Twitter. We're at Where Does Food. Um, you can follow us. You can follow me personally at Tim Wee Hunt, and you can follow L personally at L Chapo with three underscores in between the L and the Chapo. Yeah, hers isn't complicated at okay. all. You can also just look in the description and see what we have. You can see it all, including uh, Austin's thing, and uh, now including show notes because I'm not being a little lazy bitch about it. <laughs> Yeah, so we'll have some show notes in there as well. Uh, you can, guys, you can also buy us a coffee. Um, we do have a support button. You go to anchor.fm forward slash where dash does dash food, and you'll actually see our support button there. We also have the support button link in, uh, again, in the description of this podcast, of this episode. And yeah, it's the little uh, buy us coffee thing. Like, you know, we, uh, we aren't going to like give you any rewards or anything. It's literally just to support us if that's how you want to support us. Uh, and we will greatly appreciate it uh, and uh, you know send you some high fives uh, and keep producing this great podcast for you and you'll make it possible if you, if you do that Thank so you. you know shout out if you do that great shout out if you don't uh, it's fine I'm not going to say it's spending money uh, <laughs> it's not my place I think that's it crush it Tim I always have to get confirmation because I don't remember i'm not scripted these days i used to be i'm not scripted these days no you got it you got the outro down pat yeah. now so you're fine yeah cool man that was that was where food that was where chocolate we'll see you guys later